So we got an indication on this past week's Raw that we might finally be getting to that moment in time where Matt Hardy might be broken. Oh boy, broken Matt Hardy. And of course, there's some buzz and some excitement about it. And I'll say this, from my standpoint, I really wasn't watching a lot of TNA at the time when the whole uh, broken Matt Hardy and Brother Nero stuff was going on. Total nonstop deletion and so forth. I wasn't really watching that much. I would watch some of the clips when I would hear and see quite a bit of wrestling social media buzz about it. But I always looked at it, I'm like, you know, as somebody who always wants to see something different, something edgy, or at least something creative, the whole Broken Matt Hardy thing was at least that. It was at least creative. It was at least an attempt to present wrestling differently. It was at least an attempt by Matt and Jeff, but specifically Matt, to go in an entirely different direction. And to a certain degree, I feel like it worked for them um, from a business standpoint. Specifically, it's what kind of ultimately led to them returning back to WWE. But I really feel like it added some additional shelf life to both Matt and Jeff's careers. It really, really did. Um, and obviously, when they came back at WrestleMania back in April, I mean, it was the moment of moments of that show. I mean, the pop was just incredible. It was a cool, awesome moment. Here are the freaking Hardys back in WWE, and they're coming and they're winning the tag team titles. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Still one of the best moments of the year uh, by a wide margin. Maybe the best moment of the year, perhaps. Um, but I always felt like it was better suited for working in a TNA type, an ROH type, uh, indie scene type of way. Because the, the type of gimmick that it was, and for it to really work, you really needed to be able to exert quite a bit of creative control over the direction of the entire product. Um, you needed that to be prominently featured. So it felt like with companies like TNA or an ROH or other indie promotions, it was a better fit creatively to have that type of gimmick there. But ultimately, if the Hardys were going to come to WWE and they brought that broken gimmick, why not? Because a lot of WWE fans have not seen this stuff on a consistent basis. It would be old faces doing new things, and that's cool. Kind of like the anti-John Cena. Instead of being the same face, doing the same old shit different day for a decade plus. At least it would be the Hardys, recognizable, but doing things differently in a different way, knowing you could always go back to the nostalgia pop of them being the old school Hardy boys from years past. So you would have multiple opportunities to get maximum shelf life out of these guys. But then you have the whole dispute with Anthem and who owns the right to the broken gimmick and so on and so forth. And it would appear at least now that the legal battle may be wrapping up and coming to an end and that the Hardys or WWE or combination may finally be getting the rights to Broken Matt Hardy and the broken gimmick and all of that. And it's kind of cool. But then you come to the point of the Hardys came back in April. We're now at the end of November. Jeff's currently out with an injury, so it's just Matt. So you're talking about seven plus months where the WWE did a lot to really uh, undercut the value of these guys to where they were the moment of moments at WrestleMania to where you've got Matt jobbing out in worthless, crappy short matches to losers like Bray Wyatt. And it begs a simple question. Is it too late for broken Matt Hardy? Yes. Yes, it is. These are a couple of things to think about. Number one, just because the hardcore fans, the ones that take it the most seriously, maybe really enjoy the broken Matt Hardy shtick, Let's not forget the fact that it was not exactly a rousing, tremendous ratings, television, viewership success for TNA. It just wasn't. Go back and look at the numbers. It just wasn't. So what makes us think that it's necessarily going to be this huge, massive success for WWE and a boon to ratings or television viewership, especially when you've put that gimmick on the shelf for close to almost a year now? 
<clears throat> excuse me, what makes you think it's going to work? Number two, just because hardcore fans and fans of other much smaller promotions have gotten behind it, that doesn't automatically mean that that gimmick is going to work on a much larger stage, a much larger platform on the international platform that the WWE has. You may have a couple of hundred thousand people that tune into Raw each week that are familiar with it, but that will leave a couple of million people that are very unfamiliar with it or have no knowledge of it whatsoever. And there's no guarantee that it is going to appeal to them at all. Then on top of that, you've got the most fundamental question of whether it was right away or down the road, what confidence would you have that the WWE would do this thing right anyways? I can't imagine Vince, Hunter, especially Vince, really getting or understanding the whole concept of Broken Matt Hardy and Brother Nero. To me, it would seem like an entirely foreign thing to him. And when you look at the WWE's recent history, what makes you think that they would get this right? What makes you think they would have any clue of what to do with this? With what they did so far with the Hardys and how quickly they took them, similar to the Dudley Boys, but being a nice nostalgia pop attraction to really no attraction at all and just making them another team that doesn't really matter, what the hell makes you think that they would get this gimmick right? Of course it's too damn late. Even if it appears because some of the crowds where more serious fans will go to pay the ticket prices, go see WWE Live, maybe getting behind it, ultimately it's too late for this because the real question to ask is, was it ever going to be a right time for the broken gimmick in WWE? And I think that's a fair question, especially again based off of this idiotic company's history. I'd love nothing more than for the broken Matt Hardy gimmick to work. I would love nothing more than when we talk about people winning the Royal Rumble to see Matt Hardy win the Royal Rumble. I feel like that would be one of those really cool moments in part because it would be somebody other than Roman Reigns and the fans would really pop. And then when you talk about a guy like Matt Hardy, who's never had a world title in WWE, the allure, the appeal, the potential for him to do so heading into WrestleMania, I think would excite some fans. It would be something different, even with an old face in a familiar place. It would be something new and a character done in a different way. I just have zero confidence that WWE is going to do anything right with this whatsoever, and why should I have any confidence? What has WWE done to earn, merit, deserve the benefit of the doubt? Especially now, even when you look at when Matt Hardy started doing delete, 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 some of the crowd knew, quite a number of the crowd didn't, some of the crowd got involved, quite a bit of the crowd didn't. If this was really something that was truly that popular and really truly that awesome, that whole crowd would have understood, that whole crowd would have got it, and that whole crowd would have been participating and chanting, delete, 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 but they weren't. This is another one of these examples of where hardcore fans think what they know and think that they like automatically speaks to everyone and automatically applies to everyone. And the simple fact is that it's not. If for no other reason than maybe in the short term it would give the WWE a reason to actually pretend like they give a crap about the Hardy not named Jeff, I'm all for doing this because ultimately, after all of this time and legal wrangling and so forth, if you finally got the rights, you might as well use them. And let's hope they can figure it out. But it does feel like it's too late. But again, more importantly, I don't know that there was ever a right time because I just can't see Vince being like, Well, Matt, what's a broken Matt Hardy? I see you in suspenders. Red and black suspenders. That's what I envision a Vince McMahon thinking of a broken Matt Hardy, okay? They're probably not that far off from reality. And this company doesn't know what the hell they're doing. And I most certainly have no confidence, based off of their history in recent years, that they would understand, grasp, or get the fundamental concepts of broken Matt Hardy, or know what to do with him, or would really be that committed to it. It feels like it's almost something that they're doing because they're doing it because maybe they want to shut up Matt Hardy or they want to shut up some of the fans and prove how stupid it was because it wasn't a WWE concept and a WWE idea. And that's the most fundamental, important thing to think about of all. The broken Matt Hardy gimmick is not like Matt version one or something like that. This is not a WWE gimmick. 
the WWE typically, traditionally, with some notable exceptions, doesn't like to push gimmicks that aren't theirs, that aren't their ideas, that aren't their creations. So, what do you think? Do you think that this can still be salvaged? Do you think that Broken Matt Hardy can work? Or do you think it's too little too late? Or do you think it would have never worked even if they did it from day number one? Let me know in the comments section below. I just think personally, it's either A, too little too late, or B, it wouldn't have mattered when you did it. Because think about it. They had these guys come back at WrestleMania, win the tag titles, and from day one, were screwing it up. It wouldn't matter the gimmick at this point. Now maybe you understand back then that they weren't quite sure, so they brought in these guys under one premise, but then couldn't really go with that premise, so then they really didn't know what to do. But ultimately, the WWE couldn't adjust, they couldn't figure it out, and they really crapped on these guys and wasted the potential awesomeness of the first 6 to 12 months of a return Hardy Boys run. So what the hell makes me think that they'll get Broken Matt Hardy right? Nothing.